Hello all you lovely people. Attacks in Japanese video games sound weird. Let's talk about that. I translate uh, Japanese games into English for a living, and so I often come across, uh, well actually most of what I translate is uh, story-based dating sim games, but occasionally I will translate console games or other games that require um, attacks. Uh, you know, characters yelling some kind of attack while they're attacking somebody else. And I had one of those jobs recently where I had a lot of attacks to translate and I thought that I'd talk about that. And I remember before I learned Japanese when I'd play games that originally were in Japanese, sometimes I'd see some things that just seemed rather amiss. <laughs> and now that I know Japanese and now that I translate games and I'm part of the industry, I know why that is. So I thought I would explain four major reasons why uh, attacks in Japanese video games sound weird. So reason number one, and this applies much more to like old school games or like non-mainstream games, and that's that oftentimes these games are translated by native Japanese people into English. They think, oh well, you know, it's just an attack name here and there, it's a character name, it's a, a species or something. We don't need a native English speaker Spoiler alert, you do though. Uh, so what I would notice, because I, I only really play old school games, I don't really, I'm not really into newer games except for the ones that I translate, but I remember in particular there was one game that I was super into. Um, it's an old Sega Genesis game called Master of Monsters. It's like a war strategy game. And the mermaids in there are called Marmaids with an A, and the attack that they use is called Brust. And it was like, what is brust? Where does brust come from? And so now that I actually know Japanese and I know how katakana works, this is why it's mermaid and brust. This is how you spell mermaid in katakana. And note, if you write it out in nomaji, it's marumeido. And this is how you write uh, blast in katakana, burasuto. Uh, so if you look at it in nomaji, burasuto. So it should be blast, brast maybe, with an R and an A, I could understand, but um, the Japanese language doesn't have a schwa vowel, which is very prevalent in the English language, and sometimes it's an A, sometimes it's a U, sometimes it's an I or an O or an E, so because of that I think they can sometimes get confused. And just looking at this myself, just looking at the katakana, burasto, it's very close to busto, uh, which is bust, which is spelled with a U, so that might be why um, whichever Japanese person who translated that into English uh, got confused and said brust instead of blast, or even brast, you know, but brust is quite different from blast. Uh, this isn't going to be the case with like modern and or popular games just because they know better now and they will hire people like me to translate the games into English because English is my native language. It's always better to hire a translator whose native language is the language that they are translating into to translate something. For example, I don't translate English into Japanese because I would maybe make occasional mistakes like that if I did. Uh, the second reason that game attacks sound weird in Japanese, and this also applies to anime, is that a lot of these attacks are originally in English. Uh, English. <laughs> they are English words or phrases that sound foreign and therefore magical and cool to a Japanese ear or a Japanese eye, but to a native English speaker they don't sound cool, they just sound kind of weird. Um, here is one example that uh, I translated. This, this is an actual attack from a game I translated recently. Uh, this is for you is what this is. <laughs> This is for you. It's basically in katakana. It's it's a random bullshit English phrase basically. And yeah, in Japanese that sounds kind of like a magic magic incantation, sort of like um, the attacks in Harry Potter are not real English words. They're they're sort of like made up words based off of Latin. Rictus Empra, Seven Sorcia. So therefore they sound magical and they sound cool. And if you yell it, then it's like, ah, oh, that's so cool. But imagine if you're like in an epic battle and you yell, this is for you. It just doesn't sound like an attack or a magic spell or anything. So that's one thing to keep in mind there. 
Another fun, colorful example of English words sounding cool uh, to a non-native English speaker but sounding ridiculous to an English speaker is um, Sailor Star Maker's Attack from Sailor Moon. So, you know, in Japanese, you don't, you might, you'll know what star means, you might know what gentle means, you almost definitely won't know what uterus means. <laughs> so it sounds kind of cool to you if you don't speak English natively. It sounds like a magical incantation or something cool that you can shout while you're attacking somebody. But if you're a native English speaker, it sounds, it just sounds bad. Uh, the third reason that game attacks sometimes sound weird. And, and this, unfortunately, this is the case even if um, you have a native English speaker like me translating the game, the game attacks into English. This is very unfortunate and I wish that it were not the case um, because my job would be so much easier if it were not the case. Okay, I've built up the suspense enough. <laughs> so the third reason is that we don't always get context uh, for the stuff we're translating. Uh, this is definitely true of me. Um, the script-based story-based dating sim games that I translate are basically, they're visual novels. Um, it's like you'll have dialogue, but in between the dialogue you'll have narration, like, I don't love you, he yelled as he sat in the chair. I don't care, I love you anyway, I yelled, walking over to him and grabbing his hand. It, it'll read like that, so there is context, I know what's going on. There are no pictures uh, for me to look at, but I know what's going on because of the narration. But in some of the games that I translate, a particularly a recent one, it's just dialogue only. It'll be like dialogue, like the character, uh, the name of the character who's saying the line. Sometimes I don't even get that, uh, and that's lots of fun. Uh, but yes, it like the character who's saying the line, the line itself, and sometimes I'll get like a note of the character's facial expression that they're making while they're saying the line, so at least I know, um, there's a chair over there angry. Thank you, smug. Uh, sometimes I have clues like that, but I don't always have context. Like, oh, now they're at the shrine. Oh, she said this line after she punched her in the face. <laughs> like, I don't have that context often. I just have the, the actual dialogue isolated. Uh, and this is the same, the same is true of attacks. Like, sometimes, like, I'll have the name of an attack, but I, I won't have any idea what it does. I won't have any idea what it looks like. <laughs> so I just kind of have to use my best guess in, in those cases if I'm not provided with that information. And sometimes, like, I am provided with that information. Like, I'll be translating a glossary of attacks for a game, um, but instead of being logically organized in the document that I'm translating, you know, like name of attack and then underneath description, name of attack, description, it'll be like, here's the names of a bunch of attacks. And now like a thousand, two thousand lines later with no context, here's a bunch of descriptions of things. <laughs> and I won't necessarily know like which descriptions go with which things. So yeah. And here's the fourth reason why in attacks can sound kind of weird in video games. And it's because uh, spelling and katakana don't exactly mix. And this is best illustrated with just uh, a few examples. So here is a word in katakana, kurashu. So because there's no difference between L and R, in Japanese, they just have lalilulelo in their alphabet, and that stands in for lalilulelo and rarirurero. They don't have the distinction between those two, so that ra could be la or ra. Um, and it could also be ra or la, because like I mentioned earlier, they don't have a schwa vowel in their language, and they usually approximate schwa with a. Ah. So that's a problem. The ku part, it could be a k or it could be a c, who knows. And then the shu at the end, it's probably just a straight sh because there is a small tsu before that to show that it's a double sh instead of sh. <laughs> so that's probably a plain sh, uh, but it could be shu. Uh, but anyway, here are a bunch of words that it could be. It could be crash, it could be clash, or it could be crush. It could be those three English words, and you have no idea which one it is unless you have context. Here's another fun one. Now, thankfully, I did have like a glossary, um, so I was able to figure out what this word actually is, but there are many possibilities. So, kurampusu, similar issue to the very last word, uh, very similar. So, the ku, it could be a c, it could be a k, it could be ku, or it could just be k. You don't know that either. The nam part, it could be ram, lamb, rum, lum, or it could be ran, 
Lan, because the N character sometimes is a plain M and it sometimes represents a plain N. So all the combinations and permutations of that. And then the Pusu, pusu at the end, it's most likely just a PS, ps. Uh, but it could be Pusu, or it could be Pusu, or it could be Pus. Um, we don't know exactly. So looking at that word, my thought process was, well, it's either clamps, krampsu, or cramps, krampsu, or it's clumps, krampsu, or it could even be crumps, like someone's crumping, krampsu. But guess what? It's none of the above. It's krampus. <laughs> so the poo is actually pronounced p. Uh, and yeah, it's a schwa p. It's not poo, but p. So as you can see, there's like five different things that Krumpsu could be, and it's Krampus, which is like, I never would have even guessed that, and I'm really relieved that I had the glossary helping me out there. <laughs> so there is going to be a part two to this video. If you're watching it well after I uploaded it, it's probably already up there. But anyway, in part two, I'm going to give you guys a list of um, attacks in English and it's gonna be a little quiz game. You can guess, uh, see if you can guess what those attacks are in English. So look out for that. And at this point, I'd like to thank my newest lovely patrons who joined the family. We have Emma, Adam, Lucio, and Sergey. Thank you all you lovely new patrons and existing patrons. And I'll hopefully see you all in part two.